Hey folks, this is my new Barrett MRAD in 300 PRC. First shots out of the box. Never shot this gun before. Don't really know what to expect. I've heard fantastic things about the MRAD. I heard fantastic things about the 300 PRC. But um, this, by the way, is not the scope that's going to stay on here. I don't have my scope yet. Uh, so this is a temporary scope. It is a Schmittenbender LPVO one and a half to eight power. So really not very appropriate for this rifle. Uh, but for testing today, it'll work just fine. I got a target at 50 yards. I don't know where this thing's going to go because this is not zeroed. Like to make sure I'm on paper. Take a look at how it shoots. Enough talk. Stick around right after we shoot five round group. We're going to head in and uh, talk about why I made this decision for this particular precision rifle and this particular caliber. That's the rounds. Going hot. Not bad. Now this is a two-stage trigger. I've gotten a little bit of dry fire time on it. Now I'm accustomed to the 338 Win Mag, 7 millimeter mag. Uh, so I'm not, I wasn't too worried about the recoil. This is about a 14 pound rifle plus this. Recoil is very manageable, not a problem. Some of that, of course, is in uh, how you position yourself to absorb that recoil. It's round number two. Plus, this has got a very large muzzle brake provided by Barrett. That does her. We are clear. No problems whatsoever piled up my brass in a nice little pile too by the way very nice trigger this trigger is adjustable it, I like how it was set at the factory and um, let's walk up and see how it did I hope I'm on paper five shots I was aiming here, it shot there. Now that is a nice group. Let's take a look more closely. Now the Barrett MRAD actually comes shipping, shipped in this very nice Pelican case. Kind of fitted to it already, not quite as fancy as the Mark 22, uh, very, very perfectly fitted case, but Certainly a very nice uh, case here, and it comes with two 10-round magazines with uh, room to add four more. Each of those mags, by the way, will cost you about uh, $80 to $85 based on the, uh, the caliber. But for this 300 PRC, that's kind of what it's looking at, or what, what we're looking at. Let me go ahead and lift this rifle out of the case so we can look at it more closely. This is the MRAD multi-role adaptive design rifle. It's a bolt action precision rifle as you already have seen and figured out. And you know there's there's quite a number of very nice videos doing very extensive reviews on this rifle already. I'm gonna hit some of the high points, try to make it relatively quick, put out a bunch of information for you. We'll start by looking at this rifle from the butt end 
to the bore. Uh, as you can see, this MRAD has a folding stock, and it just pops out, locks into place, a little bit of a click right there. Now, to lock it, or to unlock it, I should say, just pushing this button right here will unlock it, and then the bolt sits here, just kind of snaps in place. Again, a nice little pull, snap it, you're closed. This is a fully adjustable stock, adjustable cheek piece right here, adjustable for length of pull, quite a number of adjustments here for length of pull, and also adjustable for the height of the butt uh, pad itself. On the bottom here, there are some Picatinnies, or Picatinny right here, if you want to use a monopod. You know, I use a B&T monopod on my Ruger Precision Rifle. On my 6.5 Grendel AR-15, I do not use a monopod. I have chosen then to use the bag. I actually prefer the bag, so I have put a um, cover over this uh, Picatinny section, and what you just saw, I was using the bag for my rear rest support. I actually think that's faster uh, and actually a little bit more adaptable to a variety of different conditions. This is a fairly heavy rifle, almost 14 pounds all by itself without any scope on it. And uh, that weight then uh, helps to absorb the recoil of the larger calibers that this rifle is available in. Now there's another sort of an MRAD rifle. It's called a single mission rifle, SMR. The difference with that is number one, a couple thousand dollars difference in price. Number two, it does not have a folding and uh, a folding stock. And number three, uh, it is not available in uh, swappable calibers. This one, if I remove these bolts right here, follow the instructions in the kit, I can completely change this rifle. You may have seen some videos on this. A person can completely change this rifle from the 300 PRC that it's in right now. If I bought the 338 Lapua barrel kit for about $2,000, right around there, change the barrel, change the bolt, change the mag, I'm now shooting 338 Win Mag. I'm sorry, uh, 338 Lapua. Uh, they do also offer 300 Win Mag, 300 Norma, 308 Winchester, 6.5 Creedmoor. So about $2,000 a piece, you'd have a bunch of different uh, options available to you. I don't know that I'm ever going to buy any of those other calibers, but I certainly wanted the ability to do that. Plus, if I ever shoot out this barrel, I wanted to be able to easily change the barrel without having to buy an entirely new rifle. Um, kind of a very nice bolt here, only a 60 degree throw. My Browning BBR uh, hunting rifle, deer hunting rifle, has a similar 60 degree throw and they're so much faster than a real tall lift. Very smooth on this action uh, as well. The safety is right here, very standard for a kind of an AR type of design. Short throw, very short throw. Right there, that is it. Back on safe we go. The mag release is here, very similar to what is also being used by the uh, Ruger Precision Rifle. And um, here is the trigger, obviously. It is an adjustable trigger, and out of the box from the factory, it feels really good. All right, let's give this a try and actually test this trigger. This is a two-stage trigger. That's the first stage. That's about three and a half pounds.
very clear where that first stage is. That's also about three and a half pounds. It is different by a tenth of an ounce. And one more time. A little bit lighter that time, three pounds, two ounces. That gives us an average of three pounds, 3.9 ounces. Okay, well, breaking this rifle down for cleaning or any other sort of maintenance purposes, relatively simple. Let me tell you, this rifle is machined so tightly, such close tolerances that pretty much because it's so new, brand new, um, it takes a little bit of work to break this thing down. Right here is the button that's used to remove or to release this thing. We're going to do that. We do that in the bolt open position. Press this. Uh, that then allows the rifle's upper, we'll say, to release from the lower. And then just like an AR-15, we push this pin. Uh, it's a captive pin. Pop it out and this large upper will remove from the lower. Again, lots of videos out there on that. I'm not going to demonstrate that. Picatinny's uh, all along the top and they are numbered. That is cool. I really like that. This um, handguard right here is an M-Lock style handguard here at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions. I have placed a Picatinny section. You get several of these Picatinny sections from Barrett when you buy these things. I've placed a Picatinny section right here. And uh, now you might be saying, gee, why don't you put it all the way out here? It's better to have it all the way out there. Well, uh, it's better in some ways, worse in other ways. I put it here, and oftentimes I do place it back on all of my rifles because the bipod that I'm using, it's an AccuTac bipod, has adjustments for cant, tilt, uh, as well as uh, being able to swivel, swivel or pivot that rifle. There's two controls on that that sit right about here, and if you want to reach those controls while you're in the prone position, that thing cannot be placed too far away. This is as far as I can place it and still reach it uh, without too much trouble at all. Not, not, much, not much trouble at all. Let's talk about this barrel. This barrel, it is a heavy contour barrel, no doubt about it. One and eight twist. That will stabilize these very long and heavy for caliber bu bullets. That's 30 caliber, obviously, 300 PRC. And, uh, you know, I was shooting the 225 grain. Hornady factory ammo, Hornady ELD match. Um, as you saw, stabilized very nicely. The, um, I was only shooting at 50 yards. Um, first shots, you saw the first shot ever fired from this rifle and um, did a pretty nice job. That five shot group uh, at 50 yards uh, has a 0 0.93 MOA. So right out of the box, we are sub MOA. And I am very confident that as we start stretching that out 100, 200 plus yards, that we're going to be able to stay, remain sub MOA pretty darn easily. So um, I'm real excited to keep shooting this rifle and see really what its potential is uh, in the future. 1,000 yards, 1,200 yards, possible 2,000 yards uh, shot with a rifle like that, like this and that's really what this rifle was designed for. Now it's interesting to me when I first looked at this rifle and I compared it with numerous other rifles available in uh, calibers I was interested in that this one has a fluted barrel. Now the fluting uh, is used obviously to probably lighten this rifle up just a little bit. Uh, some other folks also say that the fluting adds rigidity to the barrel and therefore improves precision. 
It's interesting because Accuracy International did a study years ago where what they did is they placed an array of lasers all around their barrels. Some of those barrels were fluted, some of those barrels were not fluted, and what they did is by shooting that those uh, rifles, those barrels, they watched how much the barrel moves or whips under uh, the firing uh, condition uh, during firing. And what they found is that they get differential movement um, when they use a fluted barrel compared to a non-fluted barrel. So they have gone to the uh, non-fluted or unfluted approach. Um, the caveat with that is, is if the fluting is not cut precisely all the way around, then you'll get that differential uh, movement because that rifle is heating and cooling differentially, differently along those flutes themselves. Um, I don't know if that really is going to be a problem with this rifle. I've got five shots out of it so far, but the stuff I've read about this rifle and seen about this rifle indicate that um, precision isn't going to be a real problem. Now there are less expensive options than this out there. Uh, I've looked at numerous other rifles, wasn't too impressed with lots of them. And uh, you know, when I ordered this rifle, I had never seen or handled an MRAD ever. I took a chance on it, and I've done that kind of stuff before. I, I'm not disappointed whatsoever. This rifle is about a $6,500 rifle. Still got to put the scope on it, rings and all that good stuff. Uh, 6500 with the with the tax and all that good stuff. But um, there are less expensive options. Some of those are really, really light rifles. And I don't think I would want to shoot that caliber in a 7 or 8 pound rifle. I've seen some out there. I appreciate that this is, you know, about 14 pounds, 13 some pounds. Now, on the end over here, we have a factory installed muzzle brake and it it's pretty effective of course I haven't tried shooting this without the muzzle brake but it certainly seems to be very effective the recoil uh, was you know quite a bit more than what you're gonna get with a 308 or shooting my Ruger precision rifle uh, shooting any of those kinds of things it's gonna be a different recoil than if you're accustomed to using semi-automatic AR-15s and AR-10s there are some very large uh, AR-10s that are made, essentially AR-10s that are made out there, uh, even all the way up to 338 Lapua. Now the recoil on those is going to be very different felt recoil compared to this, uh, or compared to any bolt-action rifle. When you fire a bolt-action rifle, all that recoil, that entire recoil impul impulse coming back at your shoulder right now. There's no delay to that. Uh, with a semi-automatic, uh, whether it's a direct gas impingement or a piston design, the, that recoil impulse will be slowed and actually extended over time. So it's going to feel like it's a softer recoil with a semi-automatic. Some of the concerns, of course, with a semi-automatic is it really is not as strong of an action as a bolt action. Some of the reloading that I've done for semi-automatics, uh, even in 308, I've always got to really, really test uh, the, the pressures in those semi-automatic rifles to make sure that I'm not exceeding pressures. Now that the primer and all this good stuff might not show any sign of excessive pressures, but the other side of that coin uh, is that you have to have that semi-automatic rifle cycle correctly with that load you may actually have to back off of a load that shows no pressure signs but it doesn't allow the rifle to cycle correctly and, and you get jams well that completely destroys the the advantages of a semi-automatic so what i've seen is that on a bolt action rifle i may be able to go a grain or more heavier on the same caliber same cartridge type of load uh, than I can in a semi-auto. Bolt action, but one grain higher than what I can in a semi-auto. So if we're looking to get 
the most out of that rifle, not necessarily pushing it to maximum load all the time, but if we want to achieve uh, a good, uh, pretty fast muzzle velocity, well, the bolt actions are actually going to give you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more capability that way. Well, I think that just about wraps up my kind of a quick, maybe not so much quick review of the Barrett MRAD rifle. If you have some questions about it, pop those things into the comment section below. I'll try to answer those as quickly as possible. And thank you for watching.